Hello everyone, I'm Robert Gregory. I'm the Public Affairs Director with the Australian Jewish Association. And with me I have Aviv Bushinsky from Israel, who's the Chairman of the Israel Squash Association. So thank you for joining us, Aviv. Um, Hi Robert, thank you for having me. Now, many of you know, AJA has been quite vocal about the need to keep politics out of sports, and particularly when it comes to discrimination in sports. That's something we've been vocal about. Many of you would also know that Malaysia has a pretty checkered history with the Jewish people. Um, it's one of the more, perhaps the most uh, anti-Semitic nations in this region. Um, many of you would know the former Prime Minister, Mahathir Mohamed, was infamous for his anti-Semitic speeches. We know Malaysia is harbors Hamas terrorists these days, and we know they've also had uh, past problems um, with refusing Israelis entry to sporting events. Now, this is particularly concerning that this this latest incident we're going to touch on has occurred because we see nations like the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Morocco, all moving in the right direction, moving towards tolerance, towards friendship with Israel. We even see Qatar, which is known as being a radical Islamic country, pledging that Israeli tourists can watch the Soccer World Cup next year. So we're going to hear about what happened and we'll try and piece together why it's happened. So Maybe Aviv, do you want to give a bit of a background, how you heard about it, what's, what exactly happened? Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, for the ones who are not so familiar with squash or squash events, uh, the World Team uh, Squash uh, Tournament is uh, something like the uh, World Cup for the uh, football, or it's the uh, creme de la creme of the uh, 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 tournaments in, in this uh, uh, field. And uh, originally it was supposed to be held in New Zealand. Due to the COVID, the WSF, which is the World Squash Federation, uh, decided to alternate and to move the, uh, uh, the, the tournament uh, to Malaysia. And once we, the Israeli uh, Association, heard about uh, this uh, change, uh, we approached the uh, uh, Federation, mentioning the fact that uh, the known, unfortunately, the known fact that Israel do not have uh, diplomatic uh, relationship with the Malaysians, and therefore it might be an issue to issue a uh, visa. Um, apparently, the uh, WSF, the president and the uh, uh, CEO uh, kind of uh, stalled us. They said, oh, you know, okay, we'll check it and uh, uh, delayed us and didn't give us a firm answer. Uh, we kept on nagging them and asking for a solution. Uh, in one point, we even said, you know, if this is a, an issue, perhaps you can move the tournament to some other country. And if there's no country that will be willing to host the tournament, uh, we, the Israelis, will be happy to host the World Team Championship and not only to host it, but to guarantee uh, that uh, the Malaysians, the Iranians, or whoever it is, they will be able to uh, enter Israel despite the politics or uh, discrimination or any other thing. Uh, at that point, they said, look, it's a complicated issue. The board has to decide. We can't uh, make such uh, changes. Um, and even in one incident, and this is uh, the, the position that uh, for me was a game changer, that I moved from a soft and very pleasant approach to a more vigorous approach is uh, that the um, president of the WSF sent an email to its CEO saying, it looks like we've managed to um, get Mr. Bushinsky out, uh, out of our back. Mistakenly, uh, mm -hmm. uh, she CC'd one of our squash uh, parties and uh, they made me aware of it. And then I understood that uh, they're just playing a game not a game of squash, but a dirty game of politics. And uh, once we realized that this is a situation and the time passed, uh, practically the tournament was supposed to um, start on uh, December 7th, uh, we asked uh, for arbitration within the instancy of the WSF. At the beginning, they agreed. They even appointed a, an Australian uh, lady that was supposed to be the chief arbitrator. Uh, once they pointed them, they backed off and said, look, you know, we've decided that there's no point to uh, deal with this issue. And at that point, we had no other solution but to uh, go to the CAS, which is the, uh, uh, the court of arbitration in Lausanne. It says, you can say the Supreme Court of Sports. 
uh, in the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, uh, when they uh, saw our appeal, they understood that they reached a dead end and decided to uh, abandon and uh, and uh, I don't want to say uh, resign because um, there are a few issues still uh, pending, but they said, okay, in such case, uh, we have to cancel the tournament. And so they did. Okay, and that's, did, did you find you got much support along the way from other delegations with, with the Australians helpful or did most people sort of not want to have anything to do with it? Uh, honestly and unfortunately, no. You know, uh, I even uh, notified and uh, showed all my friends in the squash world, including Australian, uh, the uh, what the uh, Hamas spokesman in Malaysia said, praising the Malaysian for uh, uh, disqualify Israel, and uh, and and I showed the letter that the president of the Malaysian Squash Association wrote to the WSF saying that due to the conflict between the Israelis and the Palestinians, uh, the Malaysians cannot guarantee our safety and well-being. That's how they defined it. Uh, I, I approached everybody. I approached also individual high top 10 squash players. Uh, uh, unfortunately, at that moment uh, in Australia, you don't have a top 10 squash player. Uh, you used to. Uh, but I did approach uh, many in, in France and, and other countries. They all gave us, uh, showed some support, but it was a Latin support. The only two uh, nations, countries that did uh, have, show a vocal support was the uh, Italian and, uh, for my, to my surprise, uh, the Nepal. Uh, I didn't hear not the British, not the Americans, not the Canadians, and I spoke directly to a few of them, but uh, for some reason, maybe they have other considerations, maybe they didn't want to uh, uh, be tainted uh, due to the fact that there are many uh, non-Israeli lovers in this uh, field of sport, uh, they didn't uh, raise a finger in order to uh, facilitate, our, uh, up to my knowledge, of course, uh, to help us uh, uh, in this uh, justified battle. That's, that's very disappointing. Um, and it, it leads me to my next question. Has there been a history of, of um, anti-Semitic issues in, in squash or has, has issues like this arisen before? Or? Uh, it, it's hard to define if it's pure anti-Semitism or it's uh, politics or a combination of both. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, uh, the, now um, the, 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 the players who dominate the, the, the squash game in, in, Many years ago, there were the Pakistanians and the Australians and the British. Nowadays, it's the Egyptians. And uh, whenever we invite the Egyptians to uh, participate in uh, professional squash events in Israel, uh, we, we receive a uh, decline, a, a negative answer. Uh, when I sent an email to the Malaysians uh, Squash uh, Association, telling them, you know, leave politics aside, forget about it. If you don't want to let us in, we invite you to play in Israel. I, I didn't even receive a reply for them. I, I can also tell you that the, the WSF president, when she issued this, her statement, her official statement, it was quite vague. She said, you know, there were issues with visas and also the COVID. And therefore, we've decided to cancel the tournament. And also, in the future, we need to, to ensure that the Israelis will be able to participate in, in, in future tournaments. It, you know, I, I don't expect much, but I did expect more. More from our friends around the world in the squash arena. Uh, and more from uh, um, other, um, um, other uh, instances or other uh, individuals that might, could have helped us. Uh, but yes, there is some sense of anti-Semitism. It's not only politics. For instance, when uh, we um, appealed to the uh, cast, to the court of arbitration, I got a very uh, negative email from uh, the Colombian uh, Squash Association saying, what do you want? Uh, it's, uh, there are all kinds of issues and don't be so uh, harsh and, uh, and demanding. Uh, 
I don't accept it, especially people that deal with sports and when sports and against uh, no for racism, no for the square, uh, the discrimination, no to uh, L uh, LBTs, it should not exist. Uh, so I do think that there is some sense of anti-Semitism in this whole uh, ordeal. I do. Uh, I must say that a few organizations, such as the lawyer, Jewish lawyers, uh, or, or lawyers for Israel in the UK, did help us. Uh, the um, um, uh, the World Jewish Congress uh, did help us, uh, but uh, the other countries that have not, nothing to do with uh, Israel or nothing to do with uh, Jewish people, although few of them are Jewish, kept silence. And this is what really troubles me at the end of the story. But yeah, it is very disappointing. I know in, in over here in the AJA, we tried to raise awareness on our social media, and I know quite a few people saw and shared these posts. Um, but what what can we do moving forward, um, not just in squash, but in sports in general? How can we head off this from occurring again? Do you have any ideas or strategies? Uh, first of all, I, uh, I uh, issued a statement saying that I'm quite a, you know, I'm, I can't say that I'm happy that the tournament was canceled because, you know, it's a dream of every sports uh, woman or man to, to, to uh, express themselves via sports and they are getting ready for that. Uh, this is their, you know, their, they spend their life training for such an event and suddenly uh, because of the Israelis, uh, they had to cancel the tournament. Uh, but I said that, uh, first of all, of course, we still offer our uh, hospitality. Uh, but uh, for years to come, uh, this set a precedence that uh, such things, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter what the excuse is, if it's politics, it's racism, or any, anything else, uh, it, it won't occur again. So this is what I'm trying to do. And uh, I hope that uh, people uh, should, uh, would understand that uh, uh, other things apart of pure sports should not uh, coincide. So this is my little uh, contribution to uh, our justified uh, fight. And uh, maybe what uh, proves that it was justified that uh, the decision was made yesterday. Yesterday was the eve of Hanukkah and Banu Choshech Legaresh. We need to get rid of the darkness. And it was the Haftet uh, November, November 29th, the declaration of the UN. So I think uh, for the uh, existence of Israel. So I think that though this symbolic day um, should uh, reflect that our, our cause is, is the right cause. And uh, I think that we did something very good for the sports regardless of our uh, um, specific interest. Yeah, and we here agree, we, we support what you did. Um, it is very symbolic date. And um, yeah, you're, you're being a light unto the nations and Kola Kavod, hopefully this does uh -huh. lead to long-term changes and, and we can not have to experience this again because yeah, it's not the best result that it's canceled, but it's a better result right. than having a, a racist um, event go ahead where Jews are excluded. So. Thank you so much, Aviv. Thank you for joining us and for, for what thank you're doing. You and, so thank you very much. And thanks yeah. for delivering the message. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.